Hi, this is Gilles, the radio prepper. You know, I do a lot of 3D printing for amateur radio. And I mean, if you don't have one and you like to build stuff, you're really missing out. Uh, when I first started, I thought, oh, I'll just print, you know, a little piece part once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> well, of course, I print a lot of stuff for my friends, but I print a lot for myself and all kinds of stuff, not only for amateur radio. But of course, this is the focus of the channel. So I got a new printer. It's the uh, Flash Forge Adventurer 5M Pro. Having an enclosed printer is, uh, is a good thing because it allows you to print uh, more uh, kinds of filaments because some filaments don't like to have you know drafts and the temperature has to be uh, really uh, stable so the one I'm using now uh, is also an enclosed uh, printer uh, this one is actually uh, actually pretty affordable so and that's you know uh, f to me it matters <laughs> that's for sure um, so I'll, I'll show, uh, I'll open it up and see uh, a bunch of stuff uh, stored inside. Uh, let's see uh, what's in there. All right, so I'll look uh, at what's inside. Lots of uh, protective uh, foam in there. Uh, whoop, here's a box, what's in it? Okay, tools, nice. You don't always get tools with printers. Adhesive, okay. Ah, that's to cut filament, I guess. Screwdriver, a bunch of stuff. All right, so that's pretty good. I like that. Whoop. All right, and we have a cable, power cable. Is this magnetic? Yes, it is a magnetic it looks to be about uh, 25 by 25 centimeters, so 10 by 10 inches. That's really, that makes it so much easier to uh, remove prints. I think that's it, guys. I mean, there's nothing to really put together. Uh, it's all included. Yeah, uh, I don't see anything else. And that's good news to me. Let's look at the back. Not much in the back. I see the entrance for the uh, filament here. And uh, that's about it. Here we have a uh, plug for the... Uh, oh, we have a network connection here. And we have a uh, plug for the power and a on-off button. I wish the, uh, the cover and the front was glass. But it's not glass, it's plastic. But at least, you know, I won't have to worry too much about breaking it. All right, so let's plug it in. You know what? I missed it, but <laughs> there is a spool of filament here, and there is a support for the for the uh, for the spool in the back. So, and I don't know. Oh, that's a spare uh, nozzle. Spare nozzle, guys. Nice. Uh, it looks like it's actually steel, so that might be good for like um, carbon fiber infused filaments. And that's why you should be very careful not to throw away the foam, <laughs> not too fast anyway. Oh, comes with a uh, little thumb drive. And I've done that, you know, I've, I've, I've thrown away stuff before in, in boxes that I didn't check carefully, so don't do that. So there are screws and a support for the spool here that I'm going to uh, screw in. So that's uh, provided as well. The Allen wrench is included, so... Ah! Oh my... Mm. And by the way, that was me uh, hurting my back doing nothing special. The printer comes with uh, lubricant also, special lubricant for, uh, for inside, for the screws, the driving screws. All right, smoke test. <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, I'm gonna turn the button. Oops. And it seems to be turning on. I did sign up on the, um, I downloaded the, uh, the phone app and uh, signed up for an account. So I couldn't show you that because of course I'm film filming with my phone, so. It seems to be booting up. It says initialization. Nice. Like the light. So of course I'm going to choose English. Next. Please confirm all packing uh, materials are taken out. Yeah, I did. Um, made sure there was no tape or anything like that left. Wi-Fi, let's turn that on. 
All right, so uh, I need to choose. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to need my password, <laughs> which I don't have. Uh, have it on my phone, down. Um, all right, one second. All right, so there were two screws in the front, one here, one here. Uh, there are green arrows pointing to them, so I should have seen that. And two in the back. Now I'm going to press on the OK button here, see if it will uh, continue. All right, let's see. Well, the, the head is moving. That seems to work. I didn't put any filament in, but maybe it's just going to calibrate. I really like when it's all automatic. I used to have printers that you had to do everything manually, and it's just such a pain. It's on the uh, leveling step. It doesn't seem to have the, uh, the head cleaning gizmo that my other printer has. But again, for the price, I mean, that's it's pretty, still pretty good. If it does the leveling automatically, <laughs> that's pretty darn good. I never want to level a, uh, a printing bed again. Oh, the temperature is climbing there to 230 degrees. So, I don't know, uh, there's no filament, but... Okay, it seems to be getting rid of... Uh, the little bit of filament that was in the head, so apparently uh, this was tested because there was a bit of filament in the nozzle. That's probably the stuff it does the uh, the first time you use it. Oh, there we go. Oh, now it's leveling. It's yeah, it's touching the platform. A bit like my other printer. It seems to be pretty fast. It seems to be fairly quiet. That's always a plus. The fan is a little bit noisy. It's not too bad. I don't know if you can hear that. My other printer does that too, uh, but it's, it's much noisier. This one is pretty good. So I might be able to use it to print at night, actually. That would be nice. Given the size of my apartment, I only have one room, so my printer is in my bedroom because that's my only room. <laughs> it's also my living room and my kitchen and my dining room. We have about two and a half minutes left in the, the whole process. Uh, it, there is a countdown here, which is pretty nice. Well, now it's down to zero, so no more countdown, but uh, I don't know. It's not doing anything. Well, it's melting quite a bit of filament there. So there was an orange filament before, I, I guess. Now it's the blue one, and uh, yeah, it really took a lot there. All right, uh, and that's it. So... Um, Clean the filament on the nozzle and platform, click print. Print what? Um, don't know. I'm going to click on print, but I don't know if it's going to print something. It says ready, so uh, yeah, I guess I just have to print something. Oh, it's going to print a cube. I'm not sure I want a cube. Oh, well. Uh, depends on the side, the size of the cube, I guess. I hope it's not too big. It's pretty fast. Yeah, it's a pretty fast printer. It's pretty noisy because of course I left the door open so I can film. It's really rising fast guys, unbelievable. It's a small cube but I mean still. The printer is moving of course because it's on a couch. Wow, that's pretty, that was pretty darn fast. Um, looks good too. Sharp edges. I should wait a little bit that it cools down. All right, so let's see. I'm going to take it off. Uh, it's still pretty hot, so I'm not sure that was a good idea. Yeah, pretty nice. I'm going to print something for ham radio. All right, so I'm going to uh, print a case for a mesh-tastic device a Heltec T114, so uh, I already have one here, I'm going to add the, the second part, which might be this, I'm not sure. I think that's what I already have. Oh, that's the one, yep, okay, so I'm adding this one. I'm going to switch that over, so, yep. So this, um, is fairly familiar with me because my other my other printer uses the same uh, slicer. So this you download from the Flash Forge website. 
0 0.12, first layer 0 0.3, 20%. That's enough. Support, yes, for, because of the, there's a hole here. And uh, it's multi-material, no. Others, I'm going to put outer brim, 3 millimeters. So I'm going to preview. And it's going to calculate and give me a, an approximative, uh, well, fairly precise time, actually. And it should print that in 1 hour and 44 minutes. So, uh, well, let's do it. I already uh, registered my printer here on the network, so print plate, uh, PLA, yes. Uh, this is the printer, so OK. It's going to use 26.64 grams of plastic, and I click on send. And hopefully you're going to hear the printer in a second. <laughs> well, all the information are going to print here, so uh, we'll see especially the temperature. Uh, there should be a camera inside the printer as well, so I'm going to try that. And here, I don't think anything moving yet, but uh, I don't know. Let's try the, uh, the camera. Oh, it's doing something. Yep. Definitely doing something. And I can see the, uh, the plate is uh, lowering in there, so the head is moving. Let's see if that works. I hope the camera works. It's really cool to be able to, uh, yeah, okay. Well, it's not HD, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you actually see something, so that's pretty nice. It allows you to um, actually uh, keep an eye on your print, even if you're not home. All right, seems to be uh, going fairly well. You get a much better image with the, uh, the phone camera, of course. I like the fact that it's pretty quiet. I think I could sleep with that going um, I just have to close the uh, the top there. Looking pretty good so far. So the quality is really good. I mean, I don't see the lines or anything and this is the uh, the the part that was up and it's really really good. Same thing here. It's really well printed. I don't see any problems. I haven't uh, removed the uh, the support yet, so uh, that's the that was down on the plate. But uh, the top here is really really nice. So no problem on quality. I haven't removed the uh, the support on this one either yet. But it's pretty darn good. So do I recommend this uh, printer? And the answer is definitely yes. Uh, first, because of the price. It's one third of the price of my other printer and it's almost as good. So the most important feature, of course, is the uh, automatic bed leveling. And that's, I can tell you how frustrating it is to adjust the bed of a printer. Sometimes it works really well. You can do it in five minutes and other times nothing works right and you can spend 20 minutes on it. And it's just a pain in the butt. So automatic bed leveling is very important and this printer does it very well. Now I wish the uh, the door uh, was uh, glass instead of plastic. I did scratch the plastic a little bit, you know, not being careful with it. So, but of course it would be more expensive. So, now another good uh, thing is the uh, the internal camera. It's not as good as the uh, the my other printer, but. Again, it's one third of the price and what do you care? It's just to watch, make sure that your print is going well. So you don't need a high definition camera <laughs> to watch your printer. It's just not useful. The printer is very fast, so that's definitely a plus. It's uh, all contained, it's enclosed, so you can use uh, specific uh, filaments that require that like ABS, for instance, you know, a constant temperature. So there are no drafts or, you know, air currents that's going to change the temperature of your print and, and mess things up. The spool holder in the back is a little flimsy. It's easy to, uh, to bend it, so you have to be careful about that. The uh, slicer is based on the uh, Prusa slicer, so I really like that. It works really, really well, and it allows you to... Uh, monitor your uh, your printing uh, uh, while not even at home so that's great you can do that on the phone 
so again, for the price, I mean, I think it's better to, you know, instead of buying a cheap printer for $200 or 200 euros, it's better to wait a little bit and, and get something like that. At least, you know, if you can't afford the, uh, the, the printers that are twice or uh, three times more expensive, at least you have the main features uh, with this one. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a good one. I would definitely buy it. This is not a long-term review, of course. It's just a, uh, you know, first impression and first uh, testing, but I'm pretty happy with it, and uh, I don't see any problem with that printer. I would recommend it. And on that, you have a good one.